Welcome back at Yakaima TV. Uh, today we're going to talk about chocolate. And we're going to do this with uh, Gavin Baum. He's Vice President Research and Development at the Barry Callabout Group, one of the larger and global chocolate suppliers in the world. So welcome, Gavin, at uh, the Yakaima TV. Thank you. Um, first, could you s explain a bit about what, what sort of approach you have regarding 3D printing of chocolate with your company? Absolutely. Yeah, happy to, Peter. So yeah, Barry, Barry Callabout, uh, we are the world's largest chocolate and cocoa manufacturer. Um, you know, we produce around uh, well, over 2 million uh, tons of, of, of chocolate and cocoa products every year. We process um, uh, over a million tons of cocoa beans every year. That's uh, wow. around a quarter of the world's crop. Okay. But we are a B2B company. We're not a consumer company. Okay. So not many people have heard of us, but most people will have, will have eaten us because our chocolate and cocoa products are present in around uh, one in four um, chocolate and cocoa containing consumer products worldwide. Okay. And also, you know, used extensively in restaurants, uh, hotels, etc. Mm -hmm. um, so our business um, is, is broadly made up of, you know, we sell you know, uh, we sell a lot of, uh, of chocolate, you know, delivered to customers in, in liquid road tankers. We sell, you know, cocoa butter um, and other cocoa products like cocoa powder and cocoa liquor. Yeah. But the part of our business that's uh, perhaps the most interesting is, is, is very small in volume, but, but very important in terms of profit. And that's actually our, what we call our specialties and decorations business. Yeah. And chocolate decorations is, is, is a very, very important part of our business. You know, we sell our chocolate decorations to a, a lot of, you know, hotels, restaurants, uh, cafes, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have, a, you know, some, some very well-known global you know, chocolate brands like Calabout and Cacao Barry. And, and the area of, um, you know, 3D printing, of course, is extremely interesting technology for decorations yeah i think for for two main reasons may, may i just briefly interrupt yeah. you because you said decoration so it means that you supply the end product to the restaurants and the hotels or do you supply the components so that they can realize that that end product it's a mix i mean we 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 sell a lot of our products through distributors mm -hmm. but we also supply direct to customers as well um yeah so sorry go ahead yeah um so i mean cho chocolate is is quite a, a tricky material to handle um and to you know to achieve the desired end attributes in chocolate the, the shine the gloss the snap um it, it's a complex material to manage and traditionally chocolate products are formed by molding yeah you know, molding technologies but molding has a number of limitations to it. Um, I mean, firstly, there are limitations on the geometry, uh, the shapes of products that you can produce, because of course, you know, you not only have to be able to mold the product, you also have to be able to deep it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And chocolate is quite a fragile product. So that, that sets some limits on, on the sort of geometry of the products that you can produce. And the second thing is that, of course, every time you want to change the design of your product, you have to have new molds made. Yeah. yeah and that incurs quite a long lead time. It obviously incurs quite a lot of expense. Mm -hmm. So it's not a very dynamic process in terms of being able to produce, you know, continuously produce innovative new products. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the beauty of 3D printing. Um, and we recently uh, you know, designed and, and designed and built uh, and installed from scratch ourselves a state-of-the-art chocolate 3D printing mass production line yes. in, in our factory in the Netherlands. Um, and, you know, chocolate is actually a, a very good material to use in 3D printing um, because it's a, it's a fat-based matrix, so it sets... It sets quite quickly. Yes, of oh, fat base. You mean fat? Okay. Fat. Yeah. yeah. Fat. Yeah. Co cocoa butter. Yeah. 
Um, so you can print products and they set at a, at a, at a fairly good speed. Mm -hmm. And you know, this really opens up a world of new possibilities because suddenly you're, you're not nearly as limited in terms of the shape and geometry of products that you can produce. You can produce highly intricate products. You know, I show some examples on these slides here. Yeah. You know, highly, highly intricate products. Yeah. Um, you don't need any molds. No. Um, all you need is a, a CAD file, a, a product design file that you load yeah. up to yeah. the printer and off you go. Yeah. Um, so it really opened up a, a new world of product possibilities, but also a new world of possibilities in terms of what we call the journey. So how yeah. we interact with customers. Because this, this approach, this process lends itself perfectly to working with customers to make oak products. And those customers and are, the, are those customers are the, 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 the again the B two B customer or is it even the consumer the professional consumer so to speak? Generally, it's B two B. You know, so I mean, we our first our first order um, was delivered to a major hotel chain in the, in the Netherlands who okay. wanted to print their logo you know, to serve <laughs> with desserts. Yeah. yeah. So this is the really really the beauty of 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 three D printing for chocolate. Um, you know, the, the ability to, to have a much higher throughput of innovation, to continuously bring new products to market with, with no further investment required, you know, very quickly, it's very agile. And also, as I said, this, this customer journey, the ability to co-create with customers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, to design products that are, that are personal and specific to them, you know, whether it's the logo of the company or, 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 or whatever. Um, so it's really, uh, you know, it's for us, it's revolutionizing the world of, of chocolate decorations. Of course, there are also challenges with, with 3D printing. <laughs> yeah, perhaps, the, perhaps the biggest one, you know, being able to achieve a high enough throughput. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because the printing time, of course, is, is, can be quite long. But yeah. you know, we've, we've designed a process that, that you know, largely helps to overcome that constraint. Okay. Now, now you mentioned, I mean, you, you, you in let's say in 3D printing in general, you need to have support structures. Uh, how, how do you deal with that? Is that not required in in, in 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 chocolate or is it because you adapt the design in such a form that you don't need support structures? Uh, we, we, we don't need a, we don't need any support structures to do the printing itself. Um, you know, the, the kinetics, you know, providing you control the temperature within the printing environment, you can control the kinetics of the setting of the chocolate. Okay. Um, of course, the packaging is extremely important because these are very intricate and fragile products. So, so yeah. packaging is extremely important. Yeah. So, so this means that you, you, you set up a, it's called a Mona Lisa 3D study studio. Yeah. It means that you have set up a complete value chain and supply chain to realize this. Absolutely. Well, we, in fact, we were we launched Mona Lisa Studio um, just before COVID nineteen hit ah, ah. Um, back in February, and of course, it, it's it's been a challenging time for for most businesses over the last few months, yeah. um, which has delayed a little bit our progress. But yeah, we're really sort of gearing up now to you know to to, to hit the market hard later this year. But, but it also means that your business model uh, for this particular uh, activity is also different than what you're usually doing because now you supply an end product uh, yeah and it is and in a co-creation which is well that costs time etc new things cat files those sort of things yeah i mean as i said it it it, it offers a very different way of interacting with customers yeah absolutely so rather than just you know selling catalog items yeah yeah you know, um, it, it, it lends itself much more to being able to customize and do bespoke products for individual customers. And I think this is what really unlocks the value yeah. of 3D printed chocolate decorations, both for us you know, and for our customers. Now, now, I understand that you just started, so you have your 3D printing factory in, in, in the Netherlands. But if you, let's say, go globally, then uh, like in anything there is a logistic area so then you need to have set up factories or local let's say partners or something who can produce them as well i, I suppose 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think ultimately we, we want to focus on Europe initially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is a very, I think it's a very disruptive technology. It's a very new technology. I and mean, I think we are the first people to leverage this on an industrial scale you know, within chocolate manufacturing. So it's, it's also a big learning process for us. You know, we have to learn, you know, how the process works from, you know, interacting with the customer, creating the design, yeah. you know, optimizing the design for printing. Um, we have to understand the whole process and the kinetics and the economics of, of chocolate 3D printing. But we think it's, you know, it's, it's a very exciting area. Of course, once we've, we've mastered it for Europe, of course, it, it, it lends itself very well to rolling out in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, let's say, can you give a glimpse on what sort of real challenge and difficulties you encountered during this process, which, which you didn't expect beforehand? Yeah, I think, you know, when, when you try and, uh, when, when you try and take on these very challenging innovation projects, and, and this certainly was a very challenging innovation project that we, you know, from concept, you know, to having a production line, we, we delivered on a, on a very short time scale. I mean, um, you know, a year and a half. Of course, there's a lot of challenges around, um, you know, not only the design of the printers and optimizing those in terms of the output, but also connecting that into a, an overall end-to-end -end manufacturing process. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and integrating that all together and, and, you know, we had to develop all of the software, that all of the control software that you know, for the printers and then that, that you know, integrated the whole end-to-end -end production process yeah. together, you know, from the chocolate handling through to the packaging. So that was, that was a big challenge and, you know, we didn't always get everything right first time, but you wouldn't expect to on a project no. this complexity. So that was a big learning curve. And of course, you know, chocolate is a, a challenging material to work with. And it, it's, a, it, it, it's not a straightforward process to control because, um, you know, you, you, you need to have a, a, a steady supply of well-tempered chocolate to the printer. So, so controlling the temper of the chocolate, the consistency of the chocolate is very important. Yeah. Otherwise, you can have you know problems like blocking, you know, blocking of the printer nozzles. So it's 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 harder than your average manufacturing process to control. <laughs> it, it it was and remains yeah. a steep learning curve you know, okay. for us. Okay. Okay. Well, I think you uh, you've given uh, in, in, a, in a short time a great overview of your endeavors and the results of that. So I look forward to uh, eat it myself somewhere in a hotel or restaurant because it looks the designs look uh, delicious <laughs> and absolutely nice. um, <laughs> so thank you very much and as always at the end of my uh, of our interview i always ask a personal question since you are a professional but behind that professional there is a, a person has his hobbies or preferred whatever so i'm always intrigued to find out what is your let's say uh, your favorite music or yeah. food or city or animal or whatever so please sh share it well with us okay no well i, I think my my great passion um you know yeah. for many years is, uh, is in fact jazz ah uh, really? so when i was when i was young um i studied at the royal college of music in london um for eight years between the ages of 10 and 18. Um, yes i've been passionate about you know, jazz, I, I'm a jazz pianist, an, an enthusiastic amateur jazz pianist. And uh, yeah, really been passionate about jazz for a long time. And I still try to perform, you know, quite regularly with my quartet when I can. Uh, okay. Sadly, not, not since March. No. Um, yeah, but that's what I do. One of the things that I do when I'm not uh, 3D printing chocolate. Well, I think we could continuously discussed it because i'm also a jazz fan i'm not a oh man. good man we, we we after we do this after the interview so i'm intrigued so uh, okay. i would like to thank you very much for for this interview and sharing uh, your activities uh, within very colorbout and your endeavors and also your personal let's say uh, passion so thank you very much and look forward to seeing you and hearing you at our conference in uh, the november 3d footprinting conference Thank you very much, Peter, and thank you for the opportunity to, to talk about what we're doing. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. Okay.